when it, when it comes to business, um, there's a book that I used to have, but what I do is I give out these books to my, uh, to my friends, families, or sometimes even strangers that I think if I happen to, you know, strike up a conversation and they need it more than I do and I've read it already, uh, most of the time I read the books more than once, reference through it, I give it to them. And one of those is uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, very powerful book. It taught me the meaning of um, self-employment versus, you know, your typical 40-hour work week um, difference of these two dads that Robert grew up with in Hawaii. Uh, but one of the books that I recently read that completely had an impact in my life is this, Tony Robbins, Money, Master the Game. Uh, what Tony did was he actually, um, The Seven Simple Steps to Financial Freedom. I highly get it. This is a very demanded book. He interviewed 50 of America's best investors, top investors, hedge fund managers, and whatnot. And, and one of the questions that he asked them after the interview was not, uh, how did you do, to, how you do that and everything? So, so, so typical, and Tony doesn't do that. What he does is he actually gets into the heart of things, and he says, you know, beyond money, if you were to die, what would, be, what would you suggest or recommend to, the, to your children to understand and they all said that they'll teach them where to allocate their assets. And you know, where our economy, where our world is going, because I believe right now we're going through a paradigm shift in our world in, in, as a whole. And we all need to learn this. I think they are, you know, I, I'm starting to f feel this from my own kids. And I thought my kids were Generation Y. No, they're Generation Z, completely different mindset. You know, I'm in my late 40s. And, um, and my kids are in their teens and early 20s. And the way they think, the way they go about stuff and everything you think, they're on their phone and they don't know nothing. You know what? These kids are brighter than what you think. But as parents, we need to learn from them. Because especially if you're around our age, um, yeah, you know, we've been in the workforce quite some time. But there's a paradigm shift in our world right now, in our economy right now. And we need to really hone in because there are future um, employees, uh, possibly um, collaborators, possibly partners, consumers, whatnot. So we need to understand them, okay? So I know a lot of people, like myself, I know we're stuck in the 80s and they're saying, oh, yeah, the music was great, life was good and whatever. Well, you know what? That was then. This is now. Let's deal with today, okay? Another book that I would like to recommend to you in business is real quickly is this book right here it's an old book very popular back in the 80s when the whole yuppie and all that stuff was out, called the art of war by sun tzu the great chinese general who basically teaches you how to compete valiantly strategy love it love that book read this maybe about two three times still talk about it and then i like to read about uh, companies that been there done that so I read this book called the world on time which is actually a book about FedEx and you know FedEx now you know a lot of companies out there they rely on FedEx big time the world on time okay how FedEx did it and uh, how far they've come and another thing, too, is this. Um, Silicon Valley, there's this book here. This is an old book, long time ago, called The New New Thing. Well, it's not so new anymore. But when I was reading it, this is actually the start of the whole Silicon Valley boom and all the creative minds that created that wonderful technology community right there. And lastly, this book right here, which my wife used to work for uh, Starbucks, is this by Howard Schultz, the story of Starbucks, on the struggles he had, the kind of ideas, you know, what made Starbucks uh, successful is that it's innovation. It's innovated. In other words, they're not stuck. You know, I, I, I call people who are still trying to hold on to who they were, uh, I call that hanging on to hip hop. Now, I'm still a B-boy, still, I still love hip hop, but you know what? You got to change with the time, you know, really. You got to change with the time. Um, and then with that one right there, 
once I moved into that, because I like to know the history of companies and how they succeeded from people that achieved it and how they did it, done that, and they, they told, uh, I read about their failures, their successes and everything. Then I, by Leroy Ames, which is Be a Motivational Speaker, The Lasting Leadership Principle. Now, this is actually, this book actually talks about how a church grew and what the pastor did to grow the church. And in today's time, there's a lot of churches out there that's hurting hurting for membership and um, hurting for um, congregation and whatnot. So a lot of churches out there are changing their paradigm into teaching the word and whatnot uh, and, 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 and doing whatever they can to, to gather the people in. And the unfortunate thing is this, that uh, they kind of um, leave out a lot of the really important stuff. Some, a lot of them just believe in the in the New Testament, they don't believe in the Old Testament. Well, it never said in the Bible that just believe in this and don't believe in that. No, you got to put them together. In order for the Bible to stick and to know, you got to put it together. Old Testament, New Testament, together, they're all pretty much the same. So with that being said, I'm going to move forward over here. Um, one of the last books that I uh, am reading, it's a thin book, is this right here. This, The Magic of Believing. This here, along with this here, these two books right here, matches the two and two together. And it just kind of gives you this idea of like, my gosh, you know, all that. Because all of these books here, all of this here, it's already really summed up. This is just like, this is basically what the world tells you their successes are. And this is basically where it's been and what people have been through and what, how you're supposed to think. But I like to go a little deeper. I, I, I never was one of those people that just, I like to just see it on the shallow side. I like to go deeper. Uh, and maybe that's the reason why I'm a marketing major because uh, especially now, like I'm doing this, this, um, this project, this consulting uh, job for this restaurant that's planning to, uh, to expand called Tiano's. Excellent restaurant, by the way. Um, the, uh, the owners are, are very innovative, very uh, forward thinking, and I watch out. There's something new coming out of Hawaii in terms of the food industry. And, and I'm, I'm praying that uh, I'm one of the people that will contribute into becoming that into a success. So I like to basically get things a little deeper than what they are. I cannot stand shallowness, okay? So these two books here, Great Controversy, and the desire of ages. Okay, yeah. You can call this Christian books. Okay? And this book right here. Now, this book basically talks about the walk of Jesus Christ. Basically what it is, is basically just redefines and kind of clarifies some of the, the uh, if, you, if you find uh, the Bible, the New Testament, a little somewhat ambiguous where there's some little tidbits there that needs to be clar clarified. This book here, written by Ellen G. White, is ex excellent for that. It doesn't, it doesn't take anything away from the Bible. It doesn't add anything to it, and it doesn't change anything from it. In fact, it just defines it, which is refreshing, because I cannot stand when you take things out of the good book, and you change it, you take it away, you add some on to it with your own opinion and everything. Ah, no. Clarify it for me like I'm a five-year-old, then we can talk, okay? Now, for all of you out there, and this is very popular, and I completely respect it, people that are into the whole Illuminati and the whole uh, conspiracy theory, I tell you what, it's been going on since Templar days, since Babylonian days, since the beginning of time. You know, this whole thing we're being, you know, controlled by, yeah, it's always been like that. You know, you heard of the 80-20 rule? Well, now it's pretty much 90-10 rule. Yeah, 10% of the, uh, there's only 10% of the people here in the, pop, in, the, in the whole world that controls the whole world. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not a, that is, that is not hard to figure out. So if you're over here trying to pull your brain and being angry and, oh, this and that, oh, they are against corporate and all that stuff, you know what? I tell you what, read this book. Do me a favor and read this book. Answer your own question. Okay, great con oh, upside down. Great controversy. Again, this here is the book that you want to read to know 
the whole evils that's going on out there. It's been there since the beginning of time in this book right here. It defines it, okay? Don't get all hung up in it. I'm not, I'm not one to say, oh, convert into this or believe in that. No. You know what? If you're chosen, you're chosen. If you're not chosen, then you're not chosen. You know who's chosen? The one that actually has an interest in that. And there's some of us that are just not interested in So, okay, that's your, that's your, that's your, that's your way. I'm not going to force you because, uh, you know, um, don't take my word for it. That's why I'm giving you this vlog. It's because I want you to prove me wrong and see it for yourself. So if you really are into the whole Illuminati, conspiracy theory, and all of that stuff, here, read this book. Do yourself a favor. Read this book. And then uh, uh, either follow me or friend me on, on, on Facebook, and then we'll have a discussion about it. I would love to do that with, with any one of you guys because I would love to, to have that conversation. It's time. It's time for us to really understand what is going on today. And do not be in the back shadows where, you know, all of your opinions and what you're saying all matters. It is time for us to stand up, to stand out, and to speak what we know and what not, and to understand what's going on. Now, with all of these books combined, okay, that I've showed you, with all these books combined, in fact, let me, ah, okay, huh, and these are just some, okay, these are some of the books, just some, very few books, it really all sums, it's all summed up in this book right here. Yeah, I know. You probably say, oh, my grandmother always quoted the Bible, or my uncle, or my mom wants to convert me, or my brother became this and everything, and then and he wants to, or she wants to, or they want to, or, or forcing me, and so I don't know, and whatnot. Like I said, if you're chosen, you're chosen. The Bible says so. If you're not, well, you know, if you're not interested... Yeah, then that's on, on to you. There are the ones that are chosen and the ones who are not, not chosen. If you're chosen, you're going to be convicted. You're going to open this book today and read about it. Because everything that's on, on these books that I, over here, with all the books I've read, all the secular books I've, I've read, there is not one book in there that did not start from here. And I don't know about you, I'm not, I'm not one of those mainstream guys. My Facebook friends, you know me, the ones that's known me since high school, since elementary school, since whatnot. You know what? Uh -uh. I am not into the whole mainstream stuff. Uh -uh. You know, if it's mainstream, I'm on the other way. No, I'm not into that. No. I like to get to the gist of stuff, the truth of stuff, no matter how much it hurts. I will learn it because I would rather know the truth. And then with all of that stuff that I've read and I, what I've studied... And everything is here. These are just to prove it. That it, what's said here is the truth. Remember it and put it, I highly recommend, create, have your own journal. Why? Because one day, it may not be your spouse. It may not even be your children. It may not even be your family. It may not be your relative. But one day, and make sure you date it. Someone along your lineage or someone that you know is going to get interested in what you're writing. It's going to come to that. And churches out there, don't worry. One day, all that stuff that you've been trying to preach all these times about the good book. Okay, because right now people are kind of comfortable. Kind of comfortable. But it's going to come to a help where people are going to be desperate to know that stuff that you've been wanting to tell them a long time ago. You know, all that stuff that is going on. Because after a while, because we're getting to a point right now where all of the questions that we have is being seen right now, being shown right now. There's like nothing really new anymore, pretty much. And all that stuff that you've been wanting to profess to them is now being, uh, it's now coming to fruition. It's now coming to reality. So put all your thoughts into your own journal here and write it down because you don't forget that sometimes you put it in your smartphone and then you can't pay your phone bill and then next thing you know your data is gone and, and, or, you're, or you're in the cloud. So put it in here. Stick to some old school writing. Anyways, um, once again, this is Ray. And I just want to thank you so much for tuning in. And um, I, I bid you 
all the luck in the world. And I pray for you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. 